What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video on the Big Blue in the Bronx YouTube channel. Be sure to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you know when a live stream pops or a video drops. Appreciate you all coming back. This should not be a very long video, but um, who knows? I might go into one of my tangents again. Usually, these videos that I've been doing recently have been ranging between 15 and 20 minutes. But I appreciate you guys' support as we continue to build the path to 1,000 subscribers, put out a couple of Yankee videos, hopefully those do well, and hopefully you guys like them, which is really the most important thing. So today I'm going to do a Giants video. Um, this is more of a philosophical video rather than stats related or prediction related, this that, thing and the other. Um, this video is going to be titled, Why Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley Must Be a Package Deal. Basically, one has to be with the other. It's pretty fair, right? You know, you guys can think of famous pairs, whether it be actors or characters or something like that, or athletes, you know, those are, you know, always there as well. Um, but this has to deal with something I've been talking about probably the entire offseason to start, and that's the Giants' direction, because it is not necessarily confirmed that these guys are going to be back. It's not confirmed that the direction is going to be the direction we think it is. They could flip it and say, we're going to go rebuild. Or if you're a guy that thinks, well, you know, the Giants are going to draft a quarterback, draft a running back, they may resign both. But there are reasons why Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley must be a package deal. I'm going to get into that now. Um, first of all, as I said, it trends on direction. In my opinion, you can't have one without the other, and if you do, it's kind of like a half-pregnant basis, and there's reasons as to why I say both. So let's get started on Daniel Jones, right? Let's say Saquon Barkley walks in the offseason, doesn't resign, and he goes to a team like hmm, the Buffalo Bills, Miami Dolphins, right? Let's say they pay him the money, whatever, and Daniel Jones is back. Now, Giving something to put in here, whether it's franchise tag, long-term deal, whatever, you will have some money left over from Saquon Barkley leaving if, and I mean if, Daniel Jones is not a $40 million quarterback. Because there's not many guys that the Giants can cut. Obviously, you could try to extend Leo Williams and Dory Jackson, but it's not necessarily confirmed that they are going to do that. Which, another thing to watch this offseason. But let's just say Daniel Jones is the only piece out of those two that comes back. You are now kind of restarting the whole chain of Daniel Jones has no weapons or whatever the case is. And many feel that Daniel Jones has a ceiling to his production. Which I think, personally, is true. I think there are parts of it. I would say 75% of it is true. I think Daniel Jones, could he do better with better wideouts and, you know, a better offensive line? Right. But how many excuses are we going to build? How many excuses are we going to throw out in the street? Can't really do that anymore. We're coming into year five, if he does come back. But this is the scenario that he does come back. We'd be... Some giant fans would be building in the excuses that Daniel Jones, you know, he needs weapons and all this stuff. And let's just say, okay, they draft a running back. Uh, let's pick a running back. Evan Hull out of Northwestern, right? I mean, I'm just throwing names out there. And then you keep Hodgins. Maybe you re-sign Slayton. Maybe you don't. Then you get Jordan Addison. And then maybe a fringe guy in free agency. Kind of like a cheaper McCole Hardman. Or I'm not saying McCole Hardman would be cheap. But, you know, a Mac Hollins, a wide receiver in free agency. That's not necessarily Joe Shane's plan, usually, because they usually like to just go out there um, and re-sign their guys. That's what the Giants haven't been doing for the last few years. Basically, we'd be building in the excuses that Daniel Jones, oh, he doesn't have this, he doesn't have that, whatever. And most of it would be assessed through the draft. Now... There's not a wide receiver one. There's not a Stefan Diggs in this draft. There's not a Michael Thomas in this draft. There's not an OBJ in this draft. These are solid wide receivers, and it is a deep 
wide receiver class, but it doesn't mean that these guys are going to pan out to be Devontae Adams. Now, obviously, you know, I've been wrong before on prospects, whatever the case may be. If you don't have... How do I put this into words? Saquon Barkley undoubtedly was a big part of the offense in 2022. And when the Giants didn't have a rapport with the receivers, Daniel Jones, Tyrod Taylor, because Tyrod Taylor did play for a couple of minutes in that game against the Bears, Saquon Barkley just overall was a big part of it. When the Giants, all oh, the passing offense was bad, this, that, and the other thing. And Daniel Jones took a while to have a rapport with these receivers. He took a while to get better because the first half of the season – but average play, I mean, he played well against the Packers. I'll give him that. Obviously, you know, he did a solid job in, in a running game oriented Bears game. Um, but some other games, you could say, oh, he was average. He was below average. Like the Panthers game, yeah, he threw for one touchdown, but he missed some guys open. And he had the interception against the Tennessee Titans. And who was there to kind of lift the Giants to victory? It was Saquon Barkley. So. That's kind of, and I know obviously there's not a ton of stats to go off of. Well, there is, but I'm not, I'm not choosing that right now. Overall, if we want the offense to start on a level that it kind of did last year, or I should say came off of last year where you're at least top 15 and you're trying to develop a Jordan Addison or a Jalen Hyatt or a Cedric Tillman and then get a couple of other guys in here, maybe another tight end. If you want it to at least be top 15, top 20, and we need to see progression. There's, there's no regression. No, no, no. None of that's shit. Because, you know, as much as I'm giving Dable, Shane, all these different guys three plus years, we need to see progression. We need to see that, okay, Mike Kafka is a good offensive coordinator. We need to see that Daniel Jones can be, you know, a little bit better than he was last year. I mean, he only threw for 15 touchdowns. He did have seven rushing, but still. Um, with that being said, with that being said, as I uh, usually say, can't have Lewis without Clark in this situation. And uh, he, Saquon Barkley is a huge part of Daniel Jones' game, whether we like it or not, because Daniel Jones can't pass 40 times a game. He can't pass 30 times a game, really. There needs to be an effective balance there. As much as I'm a guy that says pass first offense, that doesn't mean totally rule out the running game. And some of the guys we have on this roster right now is Zudu, McKeithen, Glowinski, those guys are fit for the running game. They need to improve their pass blocking, you know, techniques. Saquon Barkley could help ease those guys with, you know, maybe you do start off with uh, a rushing offense next year. Maybe you do, right? And then these guys can start to develop a little bit more with passing. And then you could kind of, but my point is, if you do that, you still have to have a top 15 offense, top 20 with upgrades. Now, Move over to Saquon Barkley, right? Let's just say the Giants re-sign him. And they say, nope, Daniel Jones, you're in free agency. We're going to draft a quarterback. That doesn't really make any sense. Now, guaranteed you are giving, whether it's franchise tag or whether it's, you know, the long-term deal for Saquon, you are giving your rookie quarterback because I don't see the Giants in that situation going on saying, okay, let's, you know, sign Derek Carr. Let's go out and sign Ryan, T- uh, trade for Ryan Tannehill, sign Jimmy Garoppolo. That, that doesn't work. That's not going to happen. Um, because I think it's one or the other. You're not going to go half pregnant, and I don't think the Giants will go half pregnant. So in that situation, you draft the rookie quarterback. So you're kind of, in a way, still in a rebuild, in a reconstruction. Like, you could still sign Thomas, that's fine, because he's young. You could still sign McKinney, he's young. You could still sign Dexter Lawrence, he's young. Now, will they worth be worth a lot of money? Yes, the Giants are supposed to have a lot of cap space, apparently, in 2024, but, you know, we haven't seen what 2023 looks like yet. My point with Saquon Barkley, and why he necessarily wouldn't fit into the core of the mix is this. Though you will get, you know, a solid Saquon Barkley, you know, Probably over a thousand yards because he did it with the offensive line last season. He's done it before, whatever. Is because running backs in this league have a shelf life. They do. Let's be honest. Saquon Barkley has a lot of mileage on him. And I know this isn't necessarily too accurate. You could flip it both sides. But let's take a look at something real quick. I'm going to pull it up. All right. Let's take a look at something. So the Super Bowl 
over the years with running backs, those guys usually paid low salaries. Not the Christian McCaffrey type, not the Ezekiel Elliott type. Certainly not the Dalvin Cook type. So not really 12 to 16 to 17 million dollars. Leading rusher, Isaiah Pacheco, 870K. Last year, Cam Akers, 890K. To be fair, he was a second round pick in 2020, at least to my knowledge. 2020, Leonard Fournette, this is where you kind of spin it. He was a first round pick and was supposed to be a dynamic running back, but the Jaguars had enough with him. Uh, Damian Williams, a toss around running back. Sony Michelle, he was a first round pick or a second round pick out of Georgia um, for 80K. So with that, uh, you can kind of flip it both ways as well. LeGarrette Blunt, solid back, but not necessarily top tier towards the end of his career. That was two straight Super Bowls. C.J. Anderson was a last-minute chip for the Broncos. LeGarrette Blunt again. Uh, Percy Harvin was a wide receiver, and he was a leading rusher against uh, the Broncos and the Seahawks Super Bowl. Ray Rice, I mean, he is a generational talent. Ahmad Bradshaw obviously was... You know, not a Saquon Barkley type, but he was a solid running back when we needed him. James Starch before that and Pierre Thomas, all with low salaries. So if you want to be that guy, you don't need a, oh my God, top tier running back uh, in this league. You don't need to draft one at 26 overall, 25 overall. You don't need to draft one at two overall. And listen, I'm still on the board with the Saquon Barkley pick because God knows what would have happened if we took Sam Darnold, if we took Baker Mayfield, if you felt to us, if we took this guy, that guy, or the other guy. I mean, you could always say, okay, Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen, but what would they be in a Pat Shermer offense? Like, would Lamar Jackson have as many rushing attempts? I don't think so. Josh Allen, I mean, it'd be an interesting uh, scenario to think about. But my point is with Barkley, without Jones, is you're coming into once again sort of a rebuilding situation you're not necessarily going to be a competitor until that rookie quarterback second or third year and Saquon or Barkley will already be two years in that deal and let's just say that's two years from now so it's not 23 but it's 24 uh let's see 24 he would be oh this is his birthday a few days ago happy birthday Saquon he'd be 27 28 years old and You know, we've seen running backs get run out of the league because of injury. Not saying that Saquon Barkley has any injury like that or, you know, like he's a Todd Gurley type. Not that I'm wishing it upon him, but it's just facts. A lot of these running backs don't last till 30, 35 anymore. This is not 1987. So, as far as Barkley goes, there's justifications in terms of signing Daniel Jones to a long-term contract and not doing that. Same thing goes for Saquon Barkley. I've talked about it in many videos before. Jones, uh, you know, you want to kind of keep that winning continuity, but at the same time, there could be a ceiling with his production. Saquon Barkley bringing back the continuity locker room, 1,000-yard rusher, pro bowler as well, but is the long-term fit there? Do they really want to spend that type of money on a running back? Maybe when, you know, when they could just draft one. Um, that's, in my opinion, why Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley should be a package deal. Like, comment, subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you don't want to live stream pops or drops. Appreciate you all coming back. Drop your comments. Uh, let me know if Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones should be resigned and should they be a package deal. Peace out, guys. See you later. Stay cool.